while it's nothing new to have horror and tragedy in games, or, or even in video games, uh, one thing that's often done in video games is that horror is, is presented an, in an entertaining way. A tragedy is usually a consequence of someone losing. What is, I think, particular and somewhat special to our, our Nordic LARP culture and no Nordic role-playing culture in general is that we are taking tragedy and horror into on, an, on an entirely different level. Uh, for instance, we are creating LARPs such as Ground Zero in Finland that are about bomb shelters. These people were staying 24 hours in a small bunker underground, uh, pretending that the whole world outside was bathed in nuclear holocaust and all the human life was about to end, basically. Or, or in Europa, where people were playing for four days in, in refugees in a refugee asylum. Uh, they were basically bored to death and they were crying and, and trying to get toilet paper. Of course, this is not only particular to LARP. In, in more, more tabletop role-playing kind of settings that are especially common in, in, and, 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 uh, in these settings in, in Sweden and Denmark, people have created games such as Fat Man Down by, by Danish Frederick Barry Ostergaard, which is all about uh, playing on tragedy of someone being fat and how it, how it destroys their life. Th or, or, or games called Gang Rape, which is basically a game for one rape victim and several rapists that, that is a gruesome and naturalistic portrayal of rape. Why do people do this thing? I, I, I wonder. I've been, I've been doing interviews, I've been researching on, on why are people doing this, I've been reading reports people have been writing after they played, and, and well, one of the topics, of course, is that according to Merriam-Webster dictionary, games are light-hearted activities people engage for fun. But then again, like one gang rape player who played a victim told me, fun is not quite the word I would use. <laughs> in, in fact, Susanne Greslund, in, in her account of Europa, s says, I, I think I started to cry more or less spontaneously about ten times during the game. Normally I cry quite easily, but during Europa it was extreme. I mean. She went into this LARP voluntarily, she cried there spontaneously more than 10 times and she still she did it and apparently I think these people do more of these games. One of the things in these games is that they are very visceral experience also. Even though in, in, in some of these games you only sit and talk, they can be very tangible and very emotional. I, I chose some quotes from a game called The Journey. The Journey is almost a tabletop role-playing game. There is not much touching, there is much a not, not much action. And, and one player said, I almost threw up for real. I have gagged and actually almost thrown up during other scenarios, but only when there is an emotional content. I mean, this player, this, this player has, has gagged and actually almost thrown up, up in, in previous games, and then, then he or she plays more games where, which are this kind of very stressful and emotional. Or, or another player who said, I was perspiring for the whole game and I get really nervous. I tend to get really cold, so I was freezing by the time the game was over, which was great for the game. You get that nervousness where your heart starts going a little faster and your hands are really shaky and you get really anxious. It's an uncomfortable thing, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad. I don't know why people do this. One of the reasons, I guess, is, is they are looking for intense experience. Why does someone do a bungee jump? That is because they want to have an ex intense experience. And this is what one gang rape player who played the victim role said. I am most certainly happy that I played it. It was very worthwhile experience and definitely the most intense game I've ever played. Some people I interviewed on, on playing gang rape said that I was a little bit disappointed because it wasn't that, that you know, I, I have seen people coming out of it shaking and, and about to puke and, and it didn't touch me that way so I'm a little bit disappointed. I want to play it again. Another victim said, I saw you sort of, uh, she's speaking to, to a rapist player here, I saw you sort of struggle and I was also forcing myself to let you be the horrible one, the horrib most horrible rapist. So I, I was like, no, this was just way too short, this is not horrible enough, we have to keep on to get the complete feeling of it. So that's why I pushed you and I hope that was okay for you. So here we have a gang rape victim playing the, the rapist into a situation where the rapist has to do even more horrible acts to make the, the gang rape more horrible experience for the rapist. So, so clearly key, key people are collaborating on, on making this horrible. And in, in many ways these are kind of, these are surprisingly intimate experiences when you put people into this special magic circle, you put, put five people in one room and enact something this horrible. They have to be, the, the, the nature of role playing requires them to be really close, otherwise they are unable to commit these acts and uh, otherwise they are unable to play out these roles. So one rapist said, 
it, it was making it was like making new friends in a really hardcore way. It's hard to say, but you really make a lot of strong bonds with people you go through this intense play with. It sounds strange, but it was in fact what happened. Afterwards, we really had a really strong connection. So this player basically spent two hours playing a rapist in, in this, this free-form role-playing scenario and, and really liked the other rapist and the victim afterwards. In, f in fact, also the victim players consistently report the same. After the game, I felt a lot closer to the other two players, even though I didn't, didn't know anything more about them. This might be because we had shared an extremely intimate and intense experience. So clearly there is something you can get out of these extreme experiences. We just, we are, sometimes we are a little bit unable to put it into words. Of course, I also did ask people why did they play these games. And, and for instance, from Heidi Hoppeamatsas quotes from Ground Zero, the bomb shelter LARP, one player said, let me say right away that I have never felt as strongly a terrible need for human closeness and a bottomlessly deep loneliness than I did at times during the game. So I don't know about the recipient very much because Heidi doesn't, doesn't point out it, but, but apparently I think this person has seen movies and he, he or she probably has played video games and she, his or she has, has heard music and, and uh, whatever, but, but for, for this person, ground zero, 24 hours in the bomb shelter was this meaningful experience. One player said, it's about focus on the emotional intensity and telling stories, which can be very dark and in which you can explore these darker sides of human nature and relationships. And for me, it's similar to reading fiction or watching movies that bring up those same themes. But you get a different relationship because you're playing characters and interacting with characters in a way you don't when reading a story. And of course, here we have kind of the answer to the question. Uh, these games, even though they put you into the first person position of being the rapist, they are not that different from the, you know, the movies we create. And, uh, you know, no one asks why Schindler's List, why those hor horrors were portrayed in Schindler's List, or why do you want to portray the gospel in, in, in Passion of the Christ in this manner? I think, I think our form is pretty much the same, but aiming at the intensity at the in a different way. Thank you.